now that the fret dressing's done, we have some more Nick's Dirty Socks for you. And we're going to do the same three-part decontamination process on the wood. The naphtha, mineral spirits, ammonia and water, before we start doing the finishing, just to make sure that everything is decontaminated and ready to accept the finish. So we're taking some 220 here, making sure everything's nice and level. Then I'm going to take some painter's tape, spend my time really mask off the fretboard right up to the end make sure all the frets are tucked in so none of the, the finish sneaks up onto the fingerboard surface spending extra time doing the cuts and masking off the end of the fretboard so we want to finish all the way up to the edge of the binding so we want to keep it off of the fingerboard surface but we want to make sure all the binding and wood all the way up to the edge is completely finished Now I plan on doing a special paint job on this, so I put a little joke on there. And if you can read this, you sanded too far. So here's how the neck looks, ready to be sprayed. And I made a special jig to hold the neck. Now this will only work on vintage style adjusted to the heel necks, but I took two dowel rods, drilled a hole in the one, and then used an eighth inch bit in the smaller one so it threads onto the truss rod bottom and it has a hook on it so you can hang it up while it's drying. So this provides a good handle for me to hold it while I'm spraying. So here I mixed up shellac flakes in denatured alcohol. It's a very thick three pound cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thin it with denatured alcohol. And you kinda have to do this by feel because I'm gonna put this in a preval and again, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever the pre valves spraying and what the weather is like outside. So you want to maybe get it down to like a one and a half pound cut. And now here's the shellac ready to spray as a sealer on the neck. And I wonder what the neighbors think about me. As always, test on scrap, so I'm just using it on a plank that I use to say, okay, how is it spraying? How is it, am I getting any runs? It's a little bit colder than I want, 64 degrees, relatively low humidity, but that usually lends to some orange peel. But this is just a sealer, so we're gonna sand it back anyways. So just taking the preval, going over the whole neck, real lightly in the, the corners, They'll, those will get runs really quickly. Once I know I got it sticking, and got it tacking, Go over the whole neck, make sure we got a nice even coat on there. Always make sure to clean out your spray guns, even your pre-valves. So take denatured alcohol, spray it, dip it in there so no shellac gets dried up in there. Here it is after kind of two light passes. You can see I got some runs on the neck and lots of heavy orange peel. It's probably because it's kind of cold. So probably was sticking pretty well and then I didn't realize it was starting to sag a bit not a big deal like I said this is just sealer so we're gonna sand a lot of this back like we did on the body just trying to get good coverage on the wood so I'm taking some 320 dry grit just to take a lot of that orange peel off of there take care of some of those runs that we got now when you do this, you'll probably break down to the bare wood, so we'll have to go ahead and put another couple light coats of uh, shellac on the neck. And here I'm using this Norton Pro Sand 320 blue paper. Just trying to get that shellac as even as possible. Yeah, another dirty sock. Now I'm gonna mix up a little more shellac here. Thin it to what I think is gonna spray the best. Again, can't really tell you what to do here. You gotta go by experience and just whatever the conditions are. 
I'm spraying in the Chicagoland area. It's going to be different in Florida and different in Tucson. So, so here's both necks after uh, a few coats of the shellac. Again, going to get the orange peel. It's just the name of the game when you're using pre valves and rattle cans. But you'll see that we're going to still get a pretty professional finish at the end of the day on this. So what I use is a just regular box cutter with some scotch tape to take care of any runs. So I had one little run, drip, or droplet that came out of the pre -val on a few spots. Scraped it down again. Now again, just like the body, just trying to get enough sealer on there. It's really a thin coat, even though I'm applying, you know, like four or five coats, a lot of this is getting sanded off. So this is really not a very thick finish at all. I just want a really, really nice uh, level surface because we're actually going to be painting this uh, neck a solid color. Okay, so now that the neck has been sealed and we got the finish pretty even, going to mask off the binding because we're going to start painting this neck. Now I had an idea for this that you're going to see that uh, it failed because I just didn't have the technique and I didn't have the equipment at the time. I wanted to kind of do a white black burst like an old vintage like Sears department store guitar and it just didn't come out. So I used this Desert Sand by Gracie's. Uh, Bennett Madison Music Store sold me a whole bunch of lacquer and I used it on this guitar that I made. It was based off a of 57 Strat that was made for country and western star Eddie clutch row so i still had some cans left over from that project and i'm going to use that as the white primer kind of the sealer and that was used on a lot of vintage fenders in the 50s if they got a custom color they used desert sand as the primer coat because they used them on their old music master and duo sonic guitars but here i'm actually trying to do an effect on here where i'm getting a uh, burst on the, on the actual neck you see i'm kind of going light to start off, again, make sure that it's covered and it's tack, tacky, it'll accept the finish. Once I know I got it on there, I kind of go over there back and forth. I can get a thicker, more uniform coat. I can really consider this one color coat. Make sure I get uniform, even coverage on the whole thing. Again, not ideal spraying conditions. Don't spray near cars. You can piss off the owners by getting overspray on the cars you really want to do this in a booth or a controlled area but i do everything as i can do them so you'll see how great of a result you'll get even under these kind of really really bad conditions with rattle cans and everything uh it's really amazing what you can do if you put some time into it So here's the neck after a coat of the base desert sand. And it's looking pretty good. A little bit of orange peel, but since we leveled that sealer out, it's going to be a very, very nice level finish. So now I'm going to remove the tape that was covering the binding. And we see we get a little bit of a ridge on the lacquer from the masking and I didn't mask the headstock off completely uh, evenly, so we'll have to fix that. So it's out on the binding a little bit at parts. Now, a lot of people, the, the pro old school way is just to paint over the binding and scrape it. Um, I decided to mask it, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that box cutter with the scotch tape on there and just kinda taper off the hard edge of the lacquer just to make sure it's a bit smooth. So just very, very lightly going over the top not scraping anything. The scotch will, uh, scotch tape will help protect the finish. I just want to take that hard edge on there. I want it as smooth as possible. And here's the shellac. So you can see the lacquer on top is cracked. The shellac underneath contracts at a different rate than the nitro. And so you get cracks like these. So I didn't intend for that, but it is what it is. So I went ahead and just sealed it with a couple light coats. This is actually a nitro sealer to lock in that white color and fill in some of those cracks. Now I use that intentionally on guitars where the shellac will break the top coat, so I use it to pre-age guitars naturally. So you can still see there is some cracks there, but now we've got the white protected, so we can start spraying over there 
uh, with another color and it won't break through to the white if we do some sanding here. So now I'm just doing a very, very, very light level sand just to make sure that sealer's even and I'm masking the binding again. And here's where the uh, experiment went a little wrong. So like I said, I wanted to burst the top and bottom of the neck in black. So I want the peg head black and I want the top and the bottom black with a burst pattern. I just don't have the technique uh, and I tried to put some masking here to kind of guide me to keep the black overspray off the middle part of the neck. And it just, it just didn't work out. So I even did these little uh, guides. I did these guides to try to keep my uh, hand in the spot that I want to do the burst pattern. So now I have this uh, Stumac Nitro Black Spray and I'm practicing my hand technique. You see I'm trying to do that like curved burst pattern and I'm trying to get my hand trained so that it does the, the correct pattern that I want on the neck. So I'm doing some practice on scrap, see how it's laying down. Oh, I need a haircut there. So I went ahead and started the black bursting and I realized very quickly that this was not gonna work out. I just didn't have the technique or the equipment to do it. And uh, I just started spraying it heavy and I sprayed all the way up to the masking and uh, I was like, okay, I might have to do a plan B here. But I tried to salvage this. I actually took some four hot steel wool and started wiping away the black lacquer, trying to emulate the burst pattern I was going for just didn't look the way I wanted to so I said ah screw it I'm just gonna go ahead and redo the whole neck with black lacquer I'll do that for another build when I have the time and the equipment to do it so here I'm removing the masking and uh, going to scrape the edge just make sure that's flush doesn't have that line and I'm gonna start applying clear lacquer to seal in the black and start burying it in clear coat so I even use dirty socks as my focus point for my camera so now I'm gonna start with all the clear coats to uh, bury that black lacquer and give it that deep look. So now that the neck and body is finished, I noticed that, well, the neck pocket is now too small to accept the neck itself, and I don't wanna mar the finish or anything. So now I'm gonna take it to my good friend, Brian, uh, his nickname, Catfoot. Catfoot is uh, a former jeweler. He's kind of an engineer type does everything really really nicely precision work you know the motto uh you know measure twice cut once so my motto is don't measure cut once and get angry and brian is you know measure 10 times prepare the cut measure 10 times again cut slowly and then uh cut again he's he's a precision guy so he has a little bit of a jig that he routed up for the router to very, very carefully just shave a little bit of the mahogany off the sides, make sure that the actual neck will fit snug. So this is all really, really sped up, but this is over the course of like an hour. He really took his time to route out this neck pocket. I don't have the a router or the capabilities to do this yet, so he's done this many times on his guitars. So now we got a nice snug fit that's lined up and he's always checking to make sure that uh, the neck is aligned properly and then it will bolt on and all the strings will line up correctly. So here he's just shaving off the edges and making sure everything's real nice and flush. And so finally we got the neck all routed and ready to go on. So coming up on our next episode, we're going to feature all the wet sanding, polishing, buffing to get that really nice factory finish look. And we're going to finish up all the fret dressing as well. So please like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for plenty more guitar building with Balutza Guitars. Right?